Good afternoon. Uh, I am uh, also honored to be here today. Uh, I want to take a, a quick moment to uh, acknowledge a couple of people. Uh, Pastor Jerry Stevenson, uh, who leads Bale's uh, efforts here uh, in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Uh, Mr. Joe Rivera, uh, Bishop Ford, uh, and uh, 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 Pastor uh, Seymour, uh, the president of the Justice Resource Center. they will certainly appreciate those folks being here. Uh, also want to acknowledge, we have some parents in the back. Uh, you know, we felt it was very important today that at least people who were most impacted by this issue be here, get an opportunity to hear and, and see uh, this proceeding today because it's, it's children, uh, you know, in, in that community that we're most concerned about. Um, I have uh, had the pleasure of serving as the president of the Black Alliance for Educational Options for uh, about three and a half years. Prior to that, I served as the director of charter schools for the Louisiana Department of Education, and I was uh, responsible for much of the uh, post-Katrina charter school growth uh, in the city of New Orleans. Uh, prior to that, uh, I founded the Washington, D.C. Charter School Resource Center uh, to help educators and communities in Washington, D.C. learn how to start charter schools. And so I've been studying and working with this charter school piece for a while. I even did it internationally for three and a half years. Our organization believes, without a doubt, that one of the most important things we could do is find ways to get every child into a quality school. Every single child, without exception. And we do not believe that's possible, one, with the system we have now, and two, unless we find mechanisms and ways to empower families in this educational space. We talk a whole lot in this country about parental involvement, and we want more parents to be involved. But at the end of the day, involvement means you go to the school that we tell you to go to, and you'd be happy with whatever the education is, because if it doesn't work, you have to stay there. That's unacceptable. We have to understand that if we're really going to have parental uh, involvement in schools, we also have to have some empowerment uh, for those families. Um, every child, every child deserves a high-quality education, without exception. Education is the only way we're going to help our children realize their dreams. The world, the country, our economy is becoming much more complex. The, the skills that I even graduated with at, at, graduated with at high school are no longer acceptable in the marketplace today. No longer acceptable. So we have to realize that everything outside of our public educa education system has changed dramatically in the past 20, 30, 40 years. And we still, for the most part, have an education system that looks a whole lot like it did 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago. And so if we're going to make change happen, we have to understand that. Um, they talked to, to today about some of the stats that are going on with our kids. Uh, Wayne talked about 17% of kids meeting college readiness benchmarks uh, in, the, in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Uh, he didn't say this, but only 5% of black children in the state meet, meet the college rated benchmarks on ACT. So that tells me that the majority of students, black and white, who, who are graduating seniors, are not prepared to college, regardless of whether they have a college aspiration or not. That's unacceptable. The achievement gap between black students and white students, rich students and poor students, is large and persistent. And we've done very little to be able to close it. And if I understand correctly, we even have schools of distinction in Louisville where less than 30% of black kids are proficient, where the achievement gap is 40 to 50 points between black kids and white kids, and they're called schools of distinction. The, the challenge and the problems that are going on with our kids in education today is our fault as adults. We have the responsibility. Every year we see the test scores come out, and you know, we're a little concerned about it, and we make some change around the edges, and we keep on moving. Every year we hear about kids dropping out, winding up in prison. We look at the unemployment rate, and we're concerned about it, but nobody's ready to make bold change. At the end of the day, we are culpable. All of us as adults are culpable with what's going on with our kids today. And it's not acceptable for us to go home Securing the fact that our kids are safely ensconced in private schools or in schools in the suburbs, and we don't worry about them, but other people's kids, they're, they're on their own. It's time for us to step up and be ready to make some bold change for these children. Um, so today, while there's a lot of talk about charter schools, and rightly so, in my mind this is about a little bit more than charter schools. It really is about are we willing to do whatever we have to do to get our kids a quality education? Are we willing to say, you know what, change has to happen? And a lot of people want change, but they don't want anything to change. So, you know, the question is, do we look at this situation, do we acknowledge 
and agree that it's unacceptable? And do we agree that we have to put every tool that we can into the hands of educators to try to change it? Like Wayne, I was incredibly encouraged uh, by what I heard from the commissioner today and what I heard from some of the superintendents uh, who were here. Without a doubt, there are some phenomenal educators in Kentucky. There are some phenomenal educators around this country. But what we have to do, I believe, is we have to find ways increasingly to take them out of a system that is not designed to do what we need it to do today. We need to free them up. I mean, we're talking about innovation and waivers and people having to find ways to do the right things for kids, whether they're legal or not legal. We need to free them up. We need to empower them. We need to let our educators run. We need to let them do what they know how to do. Give them the freedom to dream and create schools and operate schools that can make a big difference for kids, very different than what we have right now. Now, the reality is, there are only about 6,000 charter schools in this country educating about two, a little bit over two million kids. That's less than 5% of children in public education. So the charter school movement, even though it's been around for 20 years or so, is still an incredibly small movement. Incredibly small. We have a lot of work to do to grow quality for all kids. But at the end of the day, I think everywhere that charter schools have been created, everywhere where laws have been created, you've had increased energy that comes out of our educators. You've had increased innovation that comes out of our educators. And in a number of states, and in particular states like Louisiana and Tennessee, you've seen remarkable performance come out of those charter schools, performance that exceeds that of their traditional public school peers. So this thing, if done properly and correctly, I think can be incredibly beneficial. And I think you can do that while continuing to make all the improvements in traditional public schools that we need. Because charter schools aren't going to solve all the problems in education. It's not a turnkey solution. We're not going to pass charter school law and then all of a sudden tomorrow everybody can you know, declare victory and go home. You know, it's a tool. It's an incredibly powerful tool, we believe, but it is only a tool. And we have to continue to watch those schools to make sure if the law is passed that it's implemented properly. There's a lot of promise there, but it has to be done right. Bayo did surveys earlier this year of the black community in Kentucky. Uh, and in those surveys, uh, two important pieces of data came. First of all, parents, families support charter schools 64% uh, without just picking up the phone and saying, do you support charter schools? 64%. So we know the majority of families who are most in need support charter schools. 88% of those families believe that the government's role should be to provide as many quality options as they can for children. So I think that message is incredibly important. I think it sends the message that poor parents want the exact same thing that all of us do, the ability to get our kid into the best possible school so they can achieve their dreams and live the kind of life that we want them to be able to live. This is you know, real serious stuff. And I, I understand and respect the job and the responsibilities that people have here to do. Uh, and I know sometimes, you know, with politics and other issues, that this is not an always, you know, always an easy issue to deal with. Um, you know, we actually sit on the easy side of the table. You know, we can stand on the side and we can say, this is what we need to do, and this, you know, this makes sense. Um, and, and I know that we have the easy job, and you guys have the harder job. But I encourage you today to take that responsibility very seriously and, and, and look at the performance and say, how can we not try something that's been proven to be successful in so many different places. Uh, I want to close uh, with a quote that I think is very important uh, from noted educator and civil rights leader, uh, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune. She said, we have a powerful potential in our youth, and we must have the courage to change old ideas and practices so that we may direct their power towards good ends. Today, I challenge the members of this body uh, to, to, to have that courage, to understand that we have to do things very differently for our kids, and, and hopefully it can result in uh, a law that can create some strong uh, charter schools for the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Um, I think we can do that, and I think it will be a great benefit. Thank you.